Derek Lewis in a recent interview with Aaron Hawani confirmed that he's next in line to face Francis Ngannou for the UFC heavyweight title. He also mentioned that John Jones is out of the picture. I told you I can't, I don't even know if I can be even talking about all of this, you know, but you know, something's gonna happen. So we're really just waiting on Francis. That's all it is. We're just waiting on Francis. I got the fight, so I'm just really waiting on Francis to, um, to pick what day that he want to get it on. They gave me some dates, they gave me some dates, some months. And so we just wait for him to respond. That's all. August is looking real good right now. Okay. So they going to see what, what it's like in August for him. Yeah, Jones is out of the picture. After losing his heavyweight title to Francis Ngannou at UFC 260, Stipe Miocic on the Pat McFeen show mentioned that he wants to fight Francis Ngannou again for the third time and is looking to bulk up to 250 pounds. He went on to say, I felt good. I gave him the first round, but I wasn't worried because he's usually stronger in the first round. I felt him gassing a little bit. He was still good, but I was like, okay, we still have four more rounds to go. Then I hit him with the right hand and hesitated for a split second and got caught with that hook. What are you going to do? It sucks. Yeah, I want to get back what's mine. I'm trying to get to 250. I just made 230 last time not because I tried but because of training. I'm really going to stick to try and add some weight and mass. I felt good but 20 pounds will help. I will feel a lot stronger. He's a big dude. TJ Dillashaw has been forced out of his fight with Corey Sanhagen due to a cut. He posted this on his Instagram with the caption, I'm sad to say I have to be pulled from my fight on May 8th due to a cut received from a headbutt while drilling. Rescheduling the fight as soon as possible. Now Michelle Waterson vs Marina Rodriguez will headline the card. Michelle Waterson is coming off a split decision win over Angela Hill and Marina Rodriguez is coming off a TKO win over Amanda Hebas. Uriah Hall recently sent a heartfelt message to Chris Weidman. He posted this on his Instagram with the caption, not the ending to a chapter I imagined, but definitely an incredible story of how three men molded each other's lives with fortunate and unfortunate events. Anderson Silva, Chris Weidman and myself somehow shared a connection, sending my blessings to the Weidmans and wishing you full health on your journey to recovery. Chris Weidman responded back in the comment section saying, thank you so much brother. This sucks but I believe something great will come from this. I can't make sense of this. The funny thing was when I kicked you, I looked you in the eyes and I thought you just had a poker face on because I was confident they had to have really hurt you. Super hard kick lol. Then reality hit hard when I stepped back and noticed it wasn't you who was broken, it was me. I know you didn't want to win like that and I appreciate how classy you handled it. It really means so much to me. I will be sidelined for a while, but I'll be rooting for you in your next fight. Uh, I honestly don't know. I can't get my knee scanned until I get out of hotel quarantine. So um, hopefully nothing too serious. Um, it's a bit banged up, but it's fine. end of the first round proved that I was dominating with the injury so um yeah there was no doubt in my mind that if I got out to the second round I was just going to pick up where I left off up in the first round but these things happen uh, I'm no doctor or physio so I can't make an assumption on it but um I, I've had a few people message me that know what they're looking at and the common belief is I have probably done some ligament damage to my knee so we're gonna wait and see what the skin uh, I did put it on him to run it back uh, when we were having beers together after the fight and he was all for it but I'm sure he expects me probably to have one or two wins uh, to get another shot at him but if the UFC offered it to me I would 100% take that rematch but I don't think oh, the food is fucking shit but that's all good we got groceries coming uh, either today or tomorrow so living off Uber Eats until then. I really don't feel like it was such a special thing. I feel like all fighters should have done that, but um, I am aware that a lot of fighters are pussies. So um, yeah, it was just, it's just my belief that every fighter should go out in their shield. We had a good jab and good distance control. The speed of it surprised me, but I sort of feel like I was working out the timing of it just before the injury. I was starting to land um, combinations off um, his jab attempts. But uh, no, yeah, but yeah, that's about it. To grapple in the second round, um, I wanted to sort of feel him out in the first half of the first round and then start putting pressure on by the end of the first. And then um, by the second, really start clinching up and making it dirty. So um, yeah, I was the grappling. I 100% think I could have continued. Um, and especially after watching it back, I really don't think it would feel like they should have stopped it. But the doctor has a job to do and um, yeah. We're leaving. I'm out of here. I've escaped. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for everything. I appreciate it. All right. We made it in. Okay. 
Thank you UFC for setting up the car ride. What's up everyone? Welcome to the inaugural McGregor Fast Triathlon. The, the whole rust of 5,000. We run 10 kilometer. We cycle 20 kilometer. And then we run another 10 kilometer. We run twice, because we double run the gang. And we leave out the swimming, because we're already swimming in it. Let's go, McGregor, fast. Let's go. 